Morgan, and welcome back to me doing the reaction thing to The Last of Us. Today, I'm checking out episode the three, and man, this show, uh, this show is just everything I've always wanted out of The Last of Us show, or a Last of Us show, right? Um, it's definitely hitting all the marks. It's doing everything correct so far. Um, it's not diverting. It's not doing anything cliched it's not ruining the ambience you know it, it's still very much that struggle between joel and ellie as a matter of fact like if i was playing the video game i would have those nuances those moments where i was take a take a step back and enjoy the environment enjoy the building enjoy the actual world environment uh i'm not sure if other gamers do that as well but i like to pan the camera around and actually enjoy the visuals that is something that I'm enjoying pretty well in the TV show because, you know, the special effects and the set design, everything looks so raw and authentic. Um, I love the the after effects or whatever the, you want to call it, the mushrooms, you know, when, when they're decayed on the ground and, you know, you have this humified uh, bodies kind of like stuck against the walls. You know, that's just terrifying. And, uh, we met the clickers in the last episode, and that was freaking wicked as well. Story-wise, it's taking the same beat. Uh, Tess kind of bit the bullet. Uh, we move on, and yeah. <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's do it. Let's do the reaction. All right, here we go. Uh, intro time. Oh, this, this intro is just spooky scary, how the virus... Fungus. Not only is it taking the world above, but underground as well. So, he does. He does. He has to. Maybe that scientist was right. Like bomb everything, because how, how could you even destroy any of this? But um, also I wanted to start before the show started. Right, it's the way Tess talked about how save save any save anyone save save everyone. Puts a lot of weight into uh into Ellie. Oh wow. Like um little funeral burial there for Tess. Oh, I love that. He asks a lot of questions. <laughs> it's almost like are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet am i get to cumberland farms they got amazing pizza for a dollar don't judge me <laughs> oh, you nosy, nosy kid. Imagine what you find on there. What if? What if you find someone down there? What are you doing, girl? Oh, it's spooky scary. Okay, she's got more balls than I do. 
What do you think you're going to find down there? Again. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <sighs> no. <gasps> oh, no way. Oh, this is her first time to get. Close to one. But did she not learn that the other ones could? Oh, she's just playing with fire. <laughs> they get peanuts and an in-flight movie and annoying people's that's but it was a monkey it probably was a monkey. Well, that that explains why everything just sort of happened suddenly because people were infected and didn't even realize oh wow we're getting flashback I mean, uh, the, the most honest question would be that the military decided to kill all these people because of uh, controlling the population, you know? I know, and <laughs> when people call people like this crazy who built basements and shelter, preparing for moments like this, I'm sorry, but he's a genius. And the crazy thing is freaking Ron Swanson. The best survivalist out there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, make sure you get your wine. My only concern is you would think that um, the military would come back and be like, hey, man, I forgot my gun. I left it in the counter. You know, and that's the worst when you have an actual farm. You don't want them to be making that much noise. But then animals need to be kept outside. They need the sun. Oh. Well, he literally just built a community. Yeah, true. This is you. Do you know how to play piano? You know, I would have been more impressed if he played some of Oasis. You know what I'm saying? That's powerful. See, that's some that's heart, that's soul. So that was the girl. The girl you were singing about. There's the girl. Oh Wait, how, what is he doing? How do you know he was gay? Well, this escalated quickly. What's your name? Oh, oh hey, um. Oh, this guy broke back mountain on our asses. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. You're definitely whoring shit yourself. <laughs> okay, I'm with Bill. I'm asking you to use paint as gasoline for the lawnmower. That's all. He wants to paint the fucking house. Resource management. So help me, I will run through one of your trip wires. Same way. Oh. <laughs> no! What are the ads? It's freaking Joe. What can I just say you're not got a sign, which I get. Oh, look at this. You look so pretty. We are who we be. We are. Let's go inside. Tessa, I want to show you something. Tessa, I have to bring you one. Not inside. Frank! Frank! Let's go. Let's see. Understand? 
Wow, Joel, definitely gave him a warning. He didn't heed that a warning. And three years after that. Oh my god. After all those years of being isolation, you didn't keep up with your cardio? Wow. Those very strong words there. Wow. <laughs> wow, it just escalated quickly. And well, Bill's probably the first one to realize what's going on. Oh, when you're in that brink of, oh, you don't think for yourself. You just think about the person you love. Wait, what happened to him? How come he's in a wheelchair? Oh, 10 years later. Oh, well, I guess it makes sense. They are getting old. Maybe he had a stroke? This is an artist. I get props to the prosthetics here because they're making them age pretty well. They did a really good job with the makeup. So easy for you, my guy. That's not fair. Not fair at all. Man, this music is uh, lovely. I don't think I heard that in the video game, so this is going to be new. The person is doing that in front of him. I thought he wanted it in secret, right? <laughs> I'm mixing up your Kool Aid.
So he decided to make a suicide pack. Oh, I thought the episode was just going to end there. Oh, yes. Oh, wow, well, the plants haven't been watered. Candles either. Nope. Frank. <laughs> oh, geez, that is rotten. Well, it comes to pick up. <laughs> and there's a lot to grab. We're talking about weapons and food, supplies. Uh, toilet paper. <sighs> Sometimes I forget how essential that thing is. Oh, 
<laughs> you have 20 year old deodorant do you think it still works Wow, what a very touching, emotional, romantic episode there. Uh, I hate to say this. Um, I, I say this as a pun, you know, so relax. But it's like, the apocalypse is gay. Ooh. Honestly, not an issue here. I don't care if you're female, women, dudes, uh, helicopters, whatever the hell you want to be. Uh, romance is romance. Be it, it was a little bit forced because it's like the guy of um, Frank asked Bill, like, hey, who's the girl? And, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to start making out with you, you know. Um, I guess Bill was probably gay, but um, it's the freaking apocalypse. It's all weird and shit. Like, I don't know if you're like, okay, let's make out. I, I don't know. It, it, it could have been, <laughs> it could have been done a little bit better, but uh, just there. The built up of their camaraderie, their their I don't know, their togetherness, you know, their it, it, it was nice. Uh, uh versus the video game where like it was very ambiguous, you know, it was kinda subtle because in the video game, uh they expressed that Frank is Bill's uh partner or something like that, right? They didn't really insinuate they they were just insinuating, like they didn't you know what I mean? Like they didn't specify that they were lovers you know uh in the game we find uh frank uh who killed himself because he was infected and he left like a suicide note and he pretty much wrote how he much <laughs> how he hated bill right so um i don't know i don't know if in the video game they were insinuating that they were together or maybe it was implied maybe they were going to go for a gay relationship but they were kind of scared to do it in the video game but then they're like, yo, screw it, let's do it in the show. And I'm glad that they did because it, it kind of made sense in the video game, you know, in a way. Now, things that were different in the video game was uh, Bill is still alive in the video games, or at least that uh, I'm aware of because in the first game, we don't see him die. Um, actually, the whole interaction between Bill, Joel, and Ellie is far different uh, compared to the video game here. But that's fine because... You don't have to follow the same nuances or the same actual moments that happen in the game into the TV show because you're, you're creating your own narrative here. You're, you're pretty much taking the heart of the video game and then interpreting it in a in a different way. I, I don't know if it makes sense, or at least I don't know if I'm wording it the right way, but I think you understand what I mean. You know, like, uh, I'll throw an example. You know, like, you know, Batman can be campy and funny and yay, ooh, pow, you know, or 
He can be really dark, you know, and he where are the drugs kind of Batman. As long as you keep the same heartbeat of the character, it'll still feel the same. And I feel like this is great because who knows? Let's say in another 10 years from now, uh, we decide, or not we decide, but there's another Last of Us TV show, right? Uh, maybe a cartoon or something. Maybe this time... Uh, Bill dies and Frank lives or maybe the next adaptation follows the video game exactly right so I love that because it's, it's sort of like not the multiverse per se but those um, butterfly effects those sort of moments that can change things you know again not much of a complaint there about the changes from the video game um, I was just more like ah I cannot wait for Joel and Bill to actually have another conversation, you know? Oh, I cannot wait for these characters to actually talk about, like, I just lost Tess and he lost Frank. And it's like, ah, cannot wait. And unfortunately, they, they, they didn't get a chance to, to do that. Ron Swanson, my guy. If you guys have never watched uh, the show called Perks and Rex, I highly recommend it. He's like the highlight of that show. Um, Actually, I don't even know the actor's name, but he has done some really great movies. He's a really funny comedian. Um, so to see him in this dramatic role here, uh, outstanding, outstanding. All right, we're only three episodes in. And I mean, months ago when I saw the promotional teasers and, and I saw like the, um, you know, the posters and whatnot, I am familiar with Be Bella Ramsey. You know, she was that one character in Game of Thrones. I can't think of her name, but she was really good in Game of Thrones. She wasn't that horrible. And as a fan of The Last of Us, and especially a fan of like, man, that, that, that game has a huge place in my heart. You know, I was like, ah, oh, no one can play the role of Ellie. You know, there's just no way, you know, no way. But Bella is doing a fantastic job. She is creating this character on her own um, outside of my experiences with the video game. And now I can say I have absolutely two different versions of this character that work absolutely well with each other. So uh, again, thumbs up for Bella because she did a really good job in today's episode. So yeah, that about does it for my video. As always, let me know your thoughts. What do you guys think of today's episode? Absolutely let me know in the comment section. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, check out the Patreon for full reactions, and always, God bless you. I'll see you soon. Bye.